Auburn wants to hang on to number one. Your stars have to shine bright. Sit back, take it all in. That's what college basketball is all about, huh? We understand the prize that's on our head. <laughs> Hogs with a four-point win in overtime. Knocking off number one. Oh, the beauty of college basketball. It was tough. It is beautiful in Auburn. Absolutely a huge day. They're dressed like it's the middle of winter. We can talk about that, the difference between the south and the north. You'd think that they were sitting in 10 degrees, but they are ready. They are hyped. The signs are out. Why? Not just because Auburn's playing, but because game day is there for all of the excitement. She's Kelsey Riggs. I'm Jason Fitz. This is Countdown to College Game Day covered by State Farm. And look, I just mentioned it. The guys are there. It's going to be a wild environment. And then at noon Eastern, Auburn takes on Texas A&M on ESPN. And you can watch if you're watching this in the ESPN app right here. It's going to be a wild, fun day. And it just feels different. I know Auburn will get into it a second had a week but they are still today number one and that feels different Kelsey well it does feel different and and to see the environment there college game day and it's already such a tough place to play and you get a hungry Auburn team that's coming off of a loss and wants to get back on track right away Fitz I think the environment in the game is going to be really really good well you you mentioned it and Reese and Lafonso and everybody's going to be there the crowd's already filing in and you mentioned the Auburn issues but it's been an eventful week for the number one team in the land. Tuesday, the Tigers lost to unranked Arkansas and Fayetteville in overtime. That snapped Auburn's 19-game winning streak, set off an incredible celebration. Look at this. It's like we're in the club, most likely, like, uh, the, the crowd storming. I love every ounce of that. I love the way they got the, the lights going on, too. Like, it felt good. It felt like a huge party afterwards, which is how it should feel, right? You go bring the number one team in the nation, SEC opponent, you're home, you're unranked, and they do that. I mean, you got, you got to celebrate like that. Sorry, sorry yeah, Auburn. And you know, I think if you're the SEC, you look at it and say, hey, this is great. They still have one of the top teams in the land, but you've also got more competition coming throughout the entire conference. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing for college basketball. A good thing for us is King McClory joins us now as he has uh, repeated really throughout the season. King, appreciate the fact that you decided to hang out with us but not come see me in Connecticut this time. I don't know how I feel about I that. I feel like, like that was a me thing, I, King. I mean, that's like, you know, all of a sudden, Kelsey's <laughs> in and King's sitting it, at home. It, it's way too cold in Connecticut for me. I I'll take this Texas heat all day. There's uh, nothing that you will say the rest of this show that I will agree with more than that right there, Kate. <laughs> all right, so speaking of heat, we're going to throw a little fire here. That's called a tr uh, transition. <laughs> You're welcome, America. So uh, we're going to play a game here, in or out. And I'm going to be clear here. In or out means are you in on this team or out on this team for the rest of the year? Now, that can be variable. Some teams, that means a national championship. Sure. Some teams, that means making a little bit of noise. So you know how this works. So let's start with Auburn. We just talked about him. Number one, then they lose. Now that we've seen Auburn take this loss, King, you in or out? I'm still in. I mean, I love the front court. I love Jabari Smith. I love Walker Kessler. I love their guard play. They're super versatile as far as what they can do on the court. They score in a, a variety of ways. I'm in on this Auburn team. Even though they took that loss, I still like them. I'm in. I agree with you there. Let's keep it in the SEC, and let's go Kentucky. Of course, Coach Cal, another talented roster this year. Already ranked wins over Kansas and Tennessee. They've won five straight since that loss to Auburn. So, King, are we in or are we out on Kentucky the rest of the way? I'm in on this Kentucky squad. I mean, I love what they do. They have the best rebounding big in Oscar Sheepway. My man is averaging like 15 rebounds a game and 16 points. Then their backcourt averages 11 assists between the two guards. That's elite. A lot of teams don't even average 11 assists. Keon Brooks is really starting to come into his own, the mid-range killer that I like to call him. I like this Kentucky team. They're starting to find their stride. I like what they're bringing to the table. Yeah, I, I agree with you. All right, but let's go next to – we're not going to let Kelsey do the first ACC team, <laughs> by the way. She kicks ass on the ACC network. <laughs> we're going to let me do it yeah. because everybody knows that there's no team in all the sports I hate more than Duke. So, <laughs> let's just throw it to the De Blue Devils. They had a big week, right? They get the massive win over North yeah. Carolina, but then they lose a close one to Virginia. So, uh, this week, you in or you out on Duke? I'm in. I mean, I think this team is young, and those losses are expected. Sometimes when you – Go to rough environments and you're you bringing a young team and you're playing with a lot of freshmen. That's expected. You're going to lose some games. But this team is super talented. I like them to almost win national championship if they can find their stride and get super hot because Paolo Banquero, 
one of the best players in America, if not the best. And Mark Williams, I love what he brings as far as the shot blocking ability. I like this Duke squad. King, you did the right thing. You did not <laughs> let Jason Fitz influence you in the wrong <laughs> direction because this is a dangerous Duke. I team. thought it was totally professional. I mean, they say try not to lead the guests <laughs> on the question. I thought it was a totally balanced You let him question. and you let him right in the opposite yeah. direction the way you wanted him to go. Let's talk about the Baylor Bears. Come out hot out the gate, win 16 games. Mm. They struggled, though, 5-2 and two since um, in January, since January. But they had a lot of injuries during that time, King. So moving forward, as they get back healthy, are we in or are we out on Baylor? So I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle right now. I, I'm, I'm, in, I'm, I'm in between because, like you said, they've been battling this injury bug, and you just don't know who's going to be on the court for them. If they're fully healthy, I'm in. If they are not fully healthy, I don't know. I have a major question mark. But because I went to the school and I'm a big Baylor supporter, I got to say I'm in. I mean, he says he went to the school. Pull the shot at King up a second. Again, like, let's just make sure everybody <laughs> understands. Like, when you look at King, what's behind King up on the wall? King, I mean, let, uh, you went to the school, yeah, but you got the framed jersey behind you. But he did it yeah. so well where he was like, I'm going to come in midway, say, hey, look, they struggled for a little while. But at the end, okay, I'm in because those are my Baylor fans. I got to do it. I got to do it. I don't blame you at all. All right, I let's – I mentioned North Carolina earlier. They obviously have the rough loss to Duke. Uh, they've had an up-and-down season, to say the least. They have two separate four-game winning streaks, but two separate two-game losing streaks. So, where are you? Are you in or out or in or out on North Carolina? Fitz, I'm out. I I'm out. I Ooh. mean, the team is good. I like R.J. Davis and Caleb Love. Uh, I like Brady Manning, guy who I played against. But I'm out. I I'm not a believer. After that major loss they took to Duke, at the crib, you cannot get blown out and get smacked like that at your home floor in a big rivalry game. I'm out. This is my problem with this North Carolina team, King. It's like a roller coaster ride. I don't like mm. roller coasters. I don't like the highs. <laughs> I like the highs. I don't like the lows. You don't know which North Carolina team you're getting any given day. And to lose like that, that was really tough against Duke. King, let's look at UConn. Second year in the Big mm. East. Mixed results. A really interesting UConn team because, mm. I mean, you talk about Auburn and probably their best, not probably, definitely their best win all year, that, that double overtime win over Auburn. Mm. Are we in or are we out? on UConn the rest of the way. What do you make of this team? I'm out, Kelsey. I mean, R.J. Davis does so much for them. He's literally that engine that makes the team go. But they just don't have enough second option, third option. They just don't have enough. So I'm, I'm out on, the, on this UConn team. I like that. You know, I'm not out on the UConn women, by the way. A lot of people are. When they get healthy, they're going to kill everybody. Let's go to Arizona next. I, I feel dirty saying this. 20 and 2, and I'm trying to find a question mark around a team that's 20, uh, 21 and 2. I'm trying to find a team, like a question mark around it, but you in or out on this one. I'm absolutely in. I love this Arizona team because of what they bring to the table. They push the tempo. They're like top three in the country when it comes to tempo and pace of play. They get the ball out. Benedict Matherin is an elite guard who you will see on the next level. And they're bigs. Christian Coloco, follow down low, send everything to them and they will erase it. Christian Coloco, one of the most underrated shot blockers in the country. I really like this Arizona squad and I'm completely in. I'm in on Arizona too. Got to take better care of the basketball. They haven't done a good job of that in their last couple of games. Mm -hmm. And so that could be a difference maker. Let's talk about Rutgers. I mean, the Scarlet Knights, where are we at on Rutgers, King? Lost nine games this season. But listen, they beat number one Purdue, number 13 Michigan State, number 16 Ohio State. I mean, they got some big wins. Who is this team? Are we in or are we out? Are they a, a Cinderella story maybe? No, let, let's not get it twisted, Kelsey. This team is solid, but I'm out. I mean, they're, it's hard Aww. to play at their home arena. It's hard to play. So they might pop you at on their home floor. However, when they get on the road, get a neutral court environment, I'm out. I don't think that they're that good. I'm completely out. I am always in on anything that involves King McClure, but next time you're up here so that we can hug. Thanks for hanging out with us. Enjoy all the action today, brother. We appreciate you. Of course. Appreciate you having me, man. All right. Let's get to some surprisingly great assist brought to you by State Farm, and we start with Oklahoma State versus TCU. Damian Bach going full NFL there. Look at that. Deep ball. Manuel Miller for the easy flush on the other end, making it look like it's Sunday, not Saturday with that sort of play. Look at that. Well done. Let's move next to Wichita State versus UCF. 
CJ Walker posts up in the fa- paint. Check Mbaka and Jong cutting to the basket. Look at that alley. Huh? Well, I don't know what that feels like. I'll never know what that Me feels neither. like, even Me on neither. the three foot run uh, rim, I should say. Kansas, Texas. Dewan Harris on the fast break gives it up for Christian Brown. Slams it home. That's basically me and Kelsey when we walk to the calf. I just whoop, throw it up. Bam. That's me with the peanut butter balls on the way home. St. Bonaventure taking on St. Louis. Yuri Collins on the fast break. Yep. Those peanut ball, butter yep. balls are a delight. Bounce pass. Terrence Hargrove Jr. for the strong finish. Really good move there. Oh, love all of it. Now let's take a look at this week's Wendy's Wooden Watch. Where the latest list of names has been narrowed down to the top 20. A name on the list and someone you can watch later today. Auburn's Jabari Smith, freshman leading the Tigers in scoring, averaging over 15 points a game and is a top prospect for this year's NBA draft. You can watch Smith and Auburn take on Texas A&M, noon Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. And even better than a Frosty, and that's saying something on the Wendy women's side. Iowa's Caitlin Clark following up an amazing freshman season, even better sophomore year, averaging over 29 points a game, eight boards, eight assists per game. Earlier this week, she poured in 46 against Michigan. The third time this season, she scored over 40 points in a game. Don't believe me? Check out the stats. On Wednesday, she finished with 32 points, eight boards, six assists. Her 10th career 35-5 and five game. Played only 52 games in her career, and those 10 such games are already the most by any D1 player over the last 20 years. Simplify it. She is stinking awesome. Unreal. Caitlin Clark, one of the most exciting players in the country. She can shoot it from the locker room. Being in the zone, I mean... I just know when it's going to happen. When you when you feel those first couple shots come off your hand, you're like, all right, I'm feeling pretty good tonight. We just mentioned her in Whitney's Wooden Watch. Now we're hanging out with her. Caitlin Clark, Iowa's sophomore sensation. Hey, we appreciate you hanging out with us. Uh, we just showed a little of your highlights. I feel like every single show that I hosted this week, we talked about one moment. I know you've seen it. We've seen it. We want America to see it. This is KD talking about you. Yeah, she's displaying some skill right now that's like and she moving fast. Like it look yeah. like she don't look like it look like everybody on that court is way slower than her when yeah. she get into her stuff. I remember watching her when she was a summer going into her senior year. I was in Chicago for um three days with for the girls AU Nationals. Yeah. Her team from Iowa, like they played together so yeah. smooth, but she was always leading that. She always had the ball in her hands. Everybody was playing off of her. She just commanded the whole game. I was like, who the hell is this? <laughs> she is nice. It was like, oh, she's the best player in the country. I was like, oh, damn. I see it now. Like, you know, <laughs> right. like when you walk it's in and you like don't it. even know who anybody is, and they just yeah. be like, yo, that's the best player in the country right there. It's just like, yo, that hit you out of nowhere. Like, let me really focus in on her. They, they showing some stuff out there, like, from a skill standpoint yeah. and creativity standpoint that is just like, you can't, it's hard to deny that. Caitlin, what was your reaction when you saw that? Yeah, I mean, obviously that's super cool. Uh, Katie's always been one of my favorite players growing up, and I think he's one of the best players to ever play the game. So um, to have him say something like that, and I, I remember that moment he was talking about super vividly, one of the best memories from AAU basketball. So, no, that's super cool. And anytime an NBA star t- talks about me, it's, it's honestly a surreal moment. Kaylin, your game has been crazy all year, but this game against Michigan, first of all, it's the shrug for me afterwards. I love it. Like, yeah, I just did that again from the logo. Is there anywhere that you pull up on the court, time's ticking down, where where it's too far, or we're going to shoot it from all over the place? (laughs) To be honest, I feel pretty comfortable really anywhere from beyond half. That's just kind of who I am, and those are the shots that I practice. It's not like I'm just chucking those shots up. Um, Those are shots I really work on every single day, so – um, yeah, when you when you start making a couple and start feeling it, um, I definitely have a little more confidence to pull it from a little deeper. I mean, my God, like just watching it, the joy through all of that is like part of the joy of all of this. Now, you've got three gold medals uh, from USA Basketball, from the FIBA World Cup, America's Tournaments. How has that sort of shaped your experience and, and made you the player you are today? Yeah, I think anytime you play for USA Basketball, it's always a tremendous experience. Obviously, you get to play with different players, especially this last time I got to play with different college girls. And um, I was really, I was the captain of the team, so kind of getting put in a leadership role um, was super cool. But just getting to learn from other players, other coaches, it's not, it's not your usual situation. So I think 
you know, that more than anything. You can teach you a lot about your game, things that you're good at, things that you need to work on. And um, I try to always take those away and bring them back here and but also improve my game as well. Caitlin, been doing things all year, putting up 30 points, putting up 40 points, breaking all kinds of records, and it's been so fun. You mentioned when the shots are falling that it's really good. You start shooting from, from wherever and you get the confidence. What do you do when they aren't falling early to kind of keep yourself engaged? Yeah, I think getting my teammates involved is a big one. Um, getting those assists, setting them up for easy shots or, or getting to the free throw line because those are the stops the clock and um, they're easy points or getting to the rim. And, you know, sometimes your shots don't fall. That's just how it goes. So finding other ways to impact the game is something that Coach Bluter talked about a lot. And um, I feel like I can still do that even if my shots aren't falling. Yeah, and this is all interesting to you because you're talking about your teammates. You just talked about your experience with USA. And Kelsey and I were talking before the show. It feels like there's a talent to surge right now in women's basketball, whether it's the WNBA or the college level. It feels like there's this massive influx. As a player, do you feel the growth of the game? Oh, absolutely. I totally agree with you. And I think there's so much talent throughout the country, and that's what makes it so exciting. Exciting. That's why more people want to watch the game. Um, and that's what you really want. You want more people tuning in. You want multiple players that are, are having big nights. Um, and I, I've played with a lot of girls of those girls on USA Basketball. So um, I know there's great players out there. I love supporting them. I love watching them. Um, and that's only going to help more people want to tune in and really grow our game even more. A lot of talent around the really all of college basketball. You guys have a tough schedule coming up. But I want to talk about where you're playing and getting to play in Iowa, a place that I know means so much to you. I've never been to Iowa. Fitz, have you ever been to uh, Iowa? I played country music, of course. Like, I've, I, there, So Fitz yes. knows a little bit about Iowa. But what do people who've never been and never experienced need to know about what it means to be a part of that, that area? Yeah, I think playing here at the University of Iowa is obviously super special. We don't have any pro teams here. So this is like our pro team. And um, our fans are amazing. They come out and support us every single night. And, you know, that's one of the reasons I came here. I wanted to play in front of a big crowd. That's just the type of competitor I am. But, you know, it's awesome. I, I, this is where I grew up. I grew up two hours from the University of Iowa. So um, I'm definitely a homebody and I want to be close to my family. And, you know, this city and, and this team is basically my second family now. So I love it. All right, we're going to have a little bit of fun with you, Caitlin. We would like to do some rapid-fire questions, so we're going to throw a little bit of everything at okay. you. We'll see where this all right. goes, all right? So we'll start with, you know, <laughs> important one here. Run and Aaron, slide, sneakers, slippers. What are we wearing? Oh, sneakers, for sure. Okay, all right. If you're on a fast break, you pulling up to take the three or you driving in? <laughs> uh, I'd probably want to pull up to take the three, <laughs> but I'd get in trouble, so I'm just going to go with the one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer. All right. We just mentioned music. What's your go-to concert? Like your must-see, I've got to see this oh. one. Oh, that's a good question. Uh, honestly, like you said, country music in the summer here in Iowa is super big. So really any of those outdoor country music uh, concerts are probably my go-to. Uh, a bunch of those country music fans are big WNBA and women's basketball fans, too. You should hit yeah. up for free tickets. Right? That's a lot. <laughs> All right. If you weren't playing basketball, you would be doing what? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, well, I want to say like a pro golfer or like something else or pro tennis player, but I'm not sure I have the talent level to do that. Um, but that would be my dream. I bet she could. Oh, yeah, there's no <laughs> doubt about it. Uh, who's winning the Super Bowl, Rams or Bengals? I wish it was the Chiefs, but I'm going to go Bengals. <laughs> I love Joe Burrow. I think he's a super swaggy guy, and, and uh, you can't really hate against him. So I'm going to go Bengals on that one. Top vacation spot you absolutely want to go to? Oh, um, that's a good question. I want to go to Australia. Oh, it's, Me too. it's amazing. I've never been. Fitz has been everywhere. Yeah, well, well, uh, you know, I, I've had a very lucky life. <laughs> I'm have. not going to. All right. Good. Most important question. We'll end with this one. Breakfast for dinner. Where are we on that one? Oh, I'll accept that. Yeah. Okay. I like that. I don't like <laughs> breakfast for dinner. I am the. I am like one of the only ones. Give me bacon all day, but not the rest of it. Yeah, bacon's okay, yeah, I, but I'll take I eggs it. all day. I, I, this is this yeah. is why we all get along. Okay, most important for everybody <laughs> watching on ESPN2, I was taken on number 15 Maryland at 9 p.m. Eastern. Caitlin, we really appreciate you hanging out with us. It is fun to watch you just kick ass. So keep having a great season. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on, guys. Thanks, Caitlin. All right, we all know that Auburn is one of the toughest environments to play in in the SEC. Now, Auburn, Ben number one, Arkansas, not scared of that earlier this week. <laughs> we got chaos. But now what you get is a really angry Auburn team that's headed back home. So I thought we could have a little bit of fun using that and uh, have some fun figuring out, you know, 
You scared, bro? I love it. So we'll take something. We'll figure out if we're scared of the uh, environment, the player, the atmosphere, whatever it might be, Kelsey. Sure. Let's start with Auburn Arena. Not scared of the name, but, you know, 12-0 and 0 this year at home. If you take out last year in COVID, if you take the four years before that, lost a total of five games at home. Like, home court's advantage is real for them. You scared? Tough place to play. And Auburn fans aren't going to like this. I'm going to say not scared only because if I'm a competitor, I want to go into Auburn Arena and try and play one of the best teams in the country in one of the toughest environments. So am I going to leave scared? Maybe. But am I going to come into it scared? No. I want to play in that environment. Well, you know, I'm figuring out how to do these things as we go live here. And yes, uh, I, I, that's where Kelsey puts it. And because she's smarter than I'm, I, was, I will respect it. I think, though, that this is a little bit of SEC bias. You like that? I'm throwing a basketball, uh, football <laughs> phrase over here. Like, I think, you know, in other conferences, that home court advantage gets some real, uh, gets some real love. All right, let's we'll go to Jamarian Sharp. Peter, now, think. a lot of you guys are saying, why am I talking about Jamarian Sharp, the Western Kentucky uh, Center? Maybe you've never heard of him. Seven foot five. Seven five, 233 pounds. Insane. Like, you were talking a massive, massive man. You scared? Yeah, I'm scared because you know what he's going to do? He's going to put me on not top 10 if I try and go dunk over him. He's going to put me on Sports Center top 10 because he's going to get the block on me. I'm definitely scared to go up again. Look at him standing next to the car, Fitz. Like, are you kidding me? That makes it, it looks like a little toy, a little toy car. Yeah, it should be noted, by the way, averaging 4.5 blocks a game this season. Had 10 I'm in scared, one year. Bro. I'm, I'm scared, scared, bro. Like, that one's – now, Tom Izzo. Uh, we're throwing Tom Izzo in here because we all know that Tom Izzo has had some issues with – yelling at players look right there it looks like he's about three inches from an aneurysm like he, he's he's a fiery guy so uh, you know Michigan State look at the back and forth you scared bro Kelsey yeah coach I'm scared yeah no, no that uh, don't look at me like that and yell coach I, I sorry Tom is a, a very nice guy phenomenal coach does has done some great things you look at me and yell at me like that in the middle of the game I'm like okay coach whatever you need for the rest of your life I got you I oh, got your back like uh, great people can still be scary Rick Bird the former coach of Belmont close friend for all those years the nicest meekest person you yep. ever meet until something goes wrong and then boom I'm scared I'm scared all the he way it's greatness I'm, though he does I, I'm not even giving you a first take on this one because there's a definitive answer Purdue Pete I'm scared look mascots right are already a little right weird but Purdue Pete I don't know like it's just like the face look, it, this looks like the beginning of a cheap serial killer movie like horror movie 101 yeah it reminds me of, what is it the pulse where the guy uh what's it purge that's the I think purge, what I'm thinking yeah. of the purge the purge yeah, his eyes are just it's the eyes for me again Fitz they're too intense mascots I, there's a reason that kids cry when they see mascots anyways and, and I think if Purdue Pete walks up to a child it's not going to get a good reaction all right let's go to another player here Walker Kessler uh Naismith the uh, defensive player of the year front runner somebody that you know a lot of people at this point know his story coming from North Carolina to Auburn having a heck of a year arguably the most improved player in college basketball this year just a force in the paint you scared bro yeah, he's a problem. I mean, Walker Kessler at North Carolina, we could have put him on the nah. I'm good. Walker Kessler now, what he's doing at Auburn, definitely scared. There's a reason that he's in these conversations for defensive player of the year and what he's proven. And it's been really cool also, Fitz, to see his growth. But, yeah, uh, Walker Kessler, not a guy that I want to go off against. All right, so now everybody knows you work at the ACC Network mm -hmm. and you kick ass there. Cameron, oh, okay. crazy. He's, uh, <laughs> you uh, you scared of the crazies? Fitz, we're going to disagree on this, I feel like, because yes, you're scared of the Cameron crazies. Have you ever been to Cameron Indoor when you're sitting on press row and they're literally breathing down your back? There's a, a person wearing a baby. There's a banana guy over here, and you can't think. I mean, I have so many friends that have sat in press row, and just the photos that you get of everybody crawling all over them, especially this year at Cameron. Fitz, come on. you got to be scared, right? Do the right I am, thing. I am just taking them and putting them in that column simply because you said I have to. <laughs> no, I, I sat at the Duke Thanks. blowout game. Uh, the uh, the shoe blowout game, I should say, was Zion. And, you know, Duke, North Carolina, I was there. And, like, eh, it, was, it was, I mean, it was, it was intense, but it wasn't scary. Were your eyes closed? No, no, no. I was sitting next to Mike Ola Jr., though. So maybe I, I had some <laughs> extra confidence because he's a big boy. Bob Huggins, we scared? I mean, uh, Huggins, like, Hug is in the last name. I, I don't know. Like, he's, he's, I know he's a yeller, but he's kind of cuddly looking. Like, His I kind of want to hug him. His nickname is Huggy Bear. 
I so, mean, yeah, no, I'm not. We, we got to put him on the not scared. I'm with you on that. I know he's intense sometimes. I know he's got a colorful vocabulary, but I think I think there's there's a softer side. Let's get one Boston. more in here, and that's the Southern Illinois Saluki. Now, why would I be? Oh, look at that! Like dogs are adorable. Okay. Salukis managed to take adorable, cuddly things and make them look scary. Yes, be, I, uh, that that is a scary mascot as well. It's, it just goes back to the art. What we said earlier: all mascots are scary, and especially the first photo of them and the teeth. It's like, do we have to? Do we have to do that? But is that the point? Like, don't you want like kind of an intimidating mascot? <sighs> you want like a mascot that you're like, oh my gosh, good. Like, this, let's hug him. This mascot's a tweener. Like, it's a little scary, but it's also just a little poorly done. So is there result it looks just kind of man I'm out now I'm offending mascots and coaches this is what's happening on this show I blame Kelsey now Kelsey's fair. amazing and I'm, no, I'm offending everybody and that, that's, that's probably it. we're hanging out in Bristol it's not as much fun as the guys who are hanging out in Auburn here are the guys from the site of game day here in Auburn Arena the number one team in the land Auburn taking on Texas A&M you know it is Super Bowl weekend, and soon those frustrating days of multitasking and dividing your brain will be over, and the Super Bowl will be passed, and you can turn your attention fully to college basketball. I know Jay is eagerly awaiting that day, <laughs> but there are still some parallels, some analogies to be drawn from Super Bowl weekend into college basketball. So, if Joe Burrow in the fancy sunglasses and the loud outfits is the, and the stogie is the coolest guy in all the land, who is the coolest guy in college basketball? There's no one cold in Joe Burrow, including I Bills, am. even though he thinks I he am. is. But it's got to be Ochai Baji. You think about him. He's the best closer in college basketball, bar none. Next on that big three against Texas Tech to send it in overtime. The drive against Kansas State. The pass to Christian Brown against Oklahoma. To me, the best closer late game is Ochai Baji. You know, Joe Burrow used that transfer portal to great effect, became a much better player. Oh, did he? Matthew Stafford in the uh, pro game got a fresh start with a new team. Yeah. So who's the Matthew Stafford of college basketball, a guy with a new team getting a fresh start and killing it? It's Alondis Williams of him. Yeah, Wake Forest. <laughs> Sorry. Alondis Williams has been absolutely sensational. He's the ACC leader in scoring at 20 points a game. The ACC leader in assists at five a game. His ability to be able to navigate screen and rolls, he's terrific on that back over shoulder pass. He's been absolutely sensational for the Deacons. Kick save by Billis. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I will see Alondis on Tuesday night against yes. Duke. I'm looking forward to that and seeing him again for a second time this year. Who's the best defensive player in the country? I'll have Aaron Donald that we'll see in the Super Bowl. Well, Reese, I am happy to use this sadistic, sadistic ground acquisition game, which is nothing more than a crypto-fascist metaphor for war, as an entry point to the beautiful game <laughs> of basketball. But the Aaron Donald of college basketball has got to be Walker Kessler of Auburn. He's the most dominating defensive presence in the game. He blocks over four shots per game, the leading shot blocker in the country. He just covers up the rim from 10 feet and in. And in addition to the shots that he blocks, it's the shots that he changes and the presence that he is around the basket. He, he's the best defensive player in the country. And you know what the common thread? All of them use the transfer portal one way or another. Burrow, Alondis Williams, Stafford sort of in the pros, and Walker Kessler. He is the guy, the ticket taker in the back. College game day coming up 11. Oh, I love every ounce of that energy. It just looks like it's going to be wild in there. And it is an Auburn team that is going to be angry after losing earlier this week. Phenomenal so. signs, too, from the yeah. fans. That's one of my favorite parts always. They never disappoint. Also, advantage college basketball. Like, when I travel yeah. with the college football game day side, you're outside the whole time. They're inside. Yeah, Keep it they're warm. warm. That's, that's a huge advantage. <laughs> Speaking of college basketball, the women's uh, Georgia basketball team uh, decided to hop on to a massive trend, and it's inspired us. Before we try, we thought you should see their effort. Oh, 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 romance.
They're I, all bad, I, and I love it. I'm speechless. The fourth one, too, that had, like, a little bit of a oh. lower voice. I mean, she was going for it. Like, it was it was quality. Now, usually Christine and I do this show together. Christine Williamson, one, yeah. one of our best here, and also supremely talented uh, singer. Like, she, she yeah. sings her tail off. And so, mm -hmm. you know, the, the people behind the scenes here, and Sid thought it would be good, even though, you know, Kelsey's here. Like, we'd let, we'd let Kelsey... Show, show off. Let yeah. me tell you what you did not get when you got me. Uh -huh. A supremely talented singer. My mom has always said, make a joyful noise to the Lord. Mm -hmm. It sounds like animals maybe are dying when I make that noise. Uh, Fitz, are you ready? Yeah, we're ready for this. <laughs> Is there anything I should do to like warm up? <clears throat> <clears throat> this, you know, just go. Here's the thing. You go with confidence and people buy it. Okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. Like, do you get a sound or we just go? You, 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 on your mark, <laughs> get set. Oh, caught in a bad romance. Weird stop in the middle of that, Cal. It was we a gotta, dramatic pause, right? Right? It's, No, it's all. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, Can you keep going? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Caught in a bad romance. Uh, uh. It, it, it's one thing. It's whoa, 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 caught in a bad romance. So, oh, so I needed to, uh, uh. Yeah, it's one. Uh, uh. It, yeah. <laughs> you know what? I, 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 I'm speechless. She's well, Kelsey Riggs. What I think Riggs. you should do is just keep singing. You should keep singing. Yeah, I, I'll just keep talking. For I, no, no. I, I think you you made a joyful noise, and uh, <laughs> the Lord and everybody watching is rejoicing. That is that is a thousand percent fact. If you're watching us in the ESPN app, be sure to authenticate. You can hang out here. You can watch college basketball all day long. Hang out here. Watch the games throughout the course of the day. If you're watching anywhere else, be sure to tune in. The guys are there in Auburn, getting ready for it. Be sure to check. Out game day. This has been Countdown to Game Day, covered by State Farm. She's Kelsey Riggs. I'm Jason Fitz, and that's Aria, by the way, the beautiful. Uh, I don't know why Auburn has Look a bird, Drea but Carter. somebody will tell Go me ahead, now. Drea. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. Enjoy the day of college basketball.